Uh, hi everyone, I'm Alejandro. Um, um, thank you uh, for attending this meeting. And I am pleased to be here. So I'm going to talk a little bit of what is going on in stable and uh, radiogenic isotopes in Mexico. So let me check. Well, this is a, an archaeologist meeting. So when you think in Mexico, usually you 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 think in these pyramids and, uh, for example, Teotihuacan or Chichen Itza, or and different um, buried uh, elements like this uh, fauna in in I believe is um, Teotihuacan. But also in Mexico, we have a large number of paleontological remains. Uh, we have, for example, uh, one new museum of in a medicine museum is the Mammoth or Paleontological uh, Museum of Santa Lucia. They found like 500 uh, different individuals of mammoth in the new construction of the new airport in Mexico, Mexico City. And we have uh, dinosaurs from Mexico, our own species of dinosaurs. We have Lagerstaten um, fossil sites with uh, fish and sharks and different kind of fossils, no? So both archaeological and paleontological remains are a nation heritage. So they are protected by the law. So, well, some facts about Mexico, because I don't know, maybe if you have ever been in Mexico, well, Mexico is part of North America. They're confused because some believe there is in South America. No, it's North America. Yeah, uh, Mexico is almost two million on square kilometers. So it's a very big country and it's divided in 32 different states. And also is divided in 15 five physiographic provinces which is, are related to the um, geology and morphogeology uh, elements like mountains, um, um, plateaus and coastlines and different kinds of uh, provinces. So we have a lot of climates. So we have uh, arid to tropical, even glacier uh, in the high mountains of Mexico. We have different kind of, of vegetation. That is interesting because we have uh, C3, C4 plants and camp plants. We have a lot of camp plants. So it's interesting in, in the, the study of, of the vegetation and to the carbon-13. And in the case of the oxygen, we have a large um, variation in the oxygen, and it's related to a moon effect of the monsoon rain, to orogenic effect, to underground, underground water. So we have a lot of variation of the oxygen, so uh, um, evaporation also. Um, and in the case of geology, it's even more complicated because we have um, igneous metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks. Um, these rocks are from Paleoproterozoic, like two billion years old, the oldest rocks in Mexico, and um, too recent. You know, they have we have active volcanoes, so uh, they are recent rocks. Um, the fossil record in Mexico is from Ediacaran to the Pleistocene. So we have a large fossil record with some gaps of the, on this fossil record. So the, the Cretaceous has the most significant number of fossil sites, followed by Pleistocene because we are talking about animals. So see, this is the, a map of the geology of Mexico. So uh, it's a pre-map and the, it's developed by the Mexican Geological Survey in 2019. So, well, uh, the oldest record in, of mammals in Mexico belongs to the Cretaceous. So we have two different sites with all, very old mammals. But the main fossil sites are from Miocene, Pliocene, and Pleistocene. So we have more than 800 fossil sites in Pleistocene only. Uh, these works I focus in taxonomy. Um, What's going on with the stable isotopes? Well, uh, we do a, I, I do a little research using 
Google Scholar um, with diet, mobility, isotopes, Mexico, and mammals like keywords. Uh, we found, well, different uh, uh, works, but in Mexico, we found 27 published articles, some bachelor and master thesis in the past 20 years. So we organized the results by primary author, year, journal, NALMA, this North American land mama elch, state and locality, uh, type of isotope, sampling method, uh, the analyzed molecule, standard laboratory, and they, they combine the isotopes with microwear or mesoweer and other techniques, and the species. So the results are this. We have six primary authors, these are Bravo Cuevas, Jimenez Hidalgo, Cervantes Barriga, Gutierrez Bedoya, Marín Leiva, I, I, I'm part of this, uh, Nunes and Perez Crespo. Um, the first paper was in 2009, and the latest was in, in January in 2023. Uh, they, are, they are published in 13 journals, different journals like Geological Magazine, Historical Biology, um, Quaternary International, different kind of journals, two from Mexico. Uh, they analyze three different NALMAs, Claredonian, Infilian, and Rancho Labrian, 30 localities in 15 states, uh, 22 papers analyzed carbon isotopes, 21 oxygen isotopes, and six strontium isotopes. Uh, 21, 25 papers work with bull samples and only three with serial samples. Um, they analyze enamel and osteodentin from this from the and carbonates. The standard is BPDB. And there, there are two main laboratories in University of Florida. The UNAM is the Mexican Autonomous University and in Santa Cruz, California. Only one paper combined ice, stable isotopes with mesoweer and four with microweer. And only 31 species have been studied of the uh, at least two, two, 280 species of Mexican Pleistocene mammals. So I want to show the main results of the Claredonian and Enfilian. Uh, these are uh, Horses are the most common remains on fossil sites in Mexico. We have Pleoipus potosinus. Uh, we, you know, I, I have the diet, like it's C3, C4 diet, and live in mixing to open areas. And we have only this on, in Claredonian and the Infilian. We have Neoiparion, Dinoipus, that bore horses from different tribes, uh, more or less the same diet, C3, C4, in open and mixed areas. You, they used to live in their places. Um, they, they were rhinos in Mexico, yeah. The, the Teloceras fossil was a rhino from the Miocene of Mexico with a C3 diet. And the most study, uh, Nalma is the Rancho Labrian, like uh, 15 states and different localities. Uh, this is an uh, image of the megafauna from Mexico, from Sergio de la Rosa. It's a very nice image. So they, they analyze um, Glyptodon, this uh, um, like Glyptotherium cylindricum, this is uh, Senartra from South America, but they, they sent the species from Mexico. And they have a C3 to uh, mix it to C4 diet, good grass diet, and live in open areas. Uh, we have ground slots, uh, different ground slots. Uh, megalonics, for example, is a more uh, mix it to C4 diet. And paramilodon is more like mix it to C3 diet. No? Uh, we have the the large uh, ground slot, the, the Remoterium. It's a very big ground slot. Uh, it's mainly C3 diet in, and used to live in closed areas. Uh, the Notropterium is a, the, the smallest ground slot. It's like a seat from the Ice Age, you know, the movie. <laughs> it, 
is like a, this a C3 uh, diet, and used to live in close areas. Uh, we also they have been analyzed um, carnivores, for example, the Aeonacion dirus is the the dire wolf, and in Mexico used to feed with um, this of C3 and C4 herbivores and live in open areas. Um, Pantera atrox is the American lion uh, with a C3 and C4 uh, and C4 herbivores. And the, the short bear uh, face, Artodus simus, is the, the biggest bear in, in the in, have ever seen, have ever been. This uh, uh, used to feed of C3 herbivores and live in close areas. Uh, we see, this is uh, interesting. We analyzed the, the strontium signature on some uh, rodents. This is uh, the Sigmodon ispidus. It's a, it's a local. It used to be a local. Uh, we analyzed the, the, the diet of the capybara. There, there used to be capybaras in Mexico also. Um, and they have a C4 diet. Horses are the more common and the more analyzed um, in Mexico uh, fossils. We have three different species of horses in the late Pleistocene, the Cucedralensis, Conversidens, and Mexicanus. Uh, well, they are mainly uh, mixer feeders, where with the, some, for example, Cedralensis used to feed more like mixer feeders on C4, uh, and live in open areas, the three horses, and there are some strontium analysis that they show that they are local and non-local. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, well. The strontium is difficult to to in to make ref, um, inferences in Mexico because we have a heterogeneous um, geology, so we only can say that is local or not local. Uh, Tapirus, there is a like north that uh, is diet C3, closed areas. Uh, Antilocapra, this you know is the pronghorn. It's a, um, a family only known in in America. This is a Capromerix minor, a mixed uh, diet. The uh, buffalo, or the bison. Uh, the uh, this is the uh, bison anticus. This is a, a C4 to mixed diet. Uh, camels. Camels also evolve in North in North America and Mexico. We have uh, the llamas in South America, but yeah, we have used to have camels. You no, know? uh, Camelus sternus was a very has a very heterogeneous diet. Um, well, it's local or not local. We have llamas like Emelkenia macrocephala, the more C3 diet. Um, the Mulkenia gracilis and the small llama and Paleo llama mirifica is also so kind of llama. Um, um, uh, deers, uh, white tailed deer is a mixer. Uh, Taya sweets, like um, this one, is more C3 to C4 uh, diet, mixed diet. Um, well, the most common. Um, uh, is the mammoth because we have a lot of mammoths in Mexico. I, I like I told you before, we have like in the um, 500 individuals of mammoth in the construction of the new airport, and they're they're boiled, uh, um, uh, they construct a new museum only for these individuals. No? So, well, usually mammoths in Mexico are more mixer feeder and they are considerable local or non local and live in mixed areas. We have a different family of uh, like it's Gonfoterion, it's Cuberonius, it's a mixer feeder also. Stegomastodon is another Gonfoterion, it's a, it's a mixer feeder. And we have the Mastodon, this uh, Mammoth Americanum is also another Proversidian. So this is a very strange Thing. This is a um, mixotoxodon uh, larensis, like a, it's a notungulate from so South America. There are only three remains in North America, and Mexico have one. Um, so, as a conclusion, uh, there are 20, 27 articles 
and 31 species analyzed are relatively few about the number of localities and species of fossil fo mammals in Mexico. The studies have focused on understanding the diet and the environment of the fossil mammals. Uh, it's necessary to increase the number of studies on different temporalities with serial samples and the use of another analyzed techniques such as uh, laser ablation, ICPM, MS. And we need more work for a better understanding on the flow of viability of isotopes of carbon, oxygen, strontium in current Mexican ecosystem. So the work continues. Um, muchas gracias, thank Sean, and thank you. This is the QR for the reference of the papers, and you can scan it. Thank you.